Here with this week's hottest stories in the investment world, this is Zach's Friday Finish Line. Hello, and welcome to the Zach's Friday Finish Line. I'm Ryan McQueenie, a content writer here at Zach's, along with one of our editors, Maddie Johnson. Hello, today is Friday, April 28th, and we're here to recap this week's biggest stories from the investment and financial world. It was a busy week on Wall Street with some of the world's biggest companies reporting earnings, but we'll be touching on all the results you need to know about. Yeah, and before we jump into that, Maddie, this there was plenty going on this week that investors were reacting to outside of the world of earnings, although when you've been knee-deep in reports all week, you start to lose a sense of reality. <laughs> but I think we should at least briefly mention uh, President Trump's reveal of his tax reform I'm going to call it an outline. Blueprint, Blueprint. if you want to get a little more formal. We can do that. That was on Wednesday. This is a plan that the administration is touting as one of the biggest tax reforms in American history. Yeah, that's exactly right, Ryan. So while the details were a bit sparse, the outline was just one page long, Uh double spaced, if Uh you will. The plan looks to hit on some classic elements of the Trump doctrine. It calls for a corporate tax rate of 15%, the elimination of the estate tax, a reduction of the number of deductions. That's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. (laughs) I had to pause there and uh, see if I said that right. Mm -hmm. And a simplification of the tax code that would see just three total income tax brackets. Mm Mm-hmm. I think there's seven now. So this is all okay. the fact that it fit the outline fit on one piece of paper, I think is a metaphor for the idea behind it, which is to make the overall tax code simpler. It's a nice yeah, that, thought. That being said, investors didn't seem too impressed with the outline. Um, stocks hardly moved on after its release on Wednesday. Not that investors hated the idea of it, but thinking some kind of tax reform is already kind of priced into the market, and uh, there wasn't much of a surprise in the outline anywhere. And as we've mentioned now, there wasn't a ton to it yet. So right, yeah, fair enough. But we'll have we'll all have to keep an eye on that reform as it makes its way into into a bill form soon. Which is sure to be several hundred pages long. Yes, several, yeah. So So now let's jump into earnings. So Starbucks reported on Thursday, uh, they released its second quarter fiscal 2017 results. And today the stock was down about 3% the last time I checked. The company reported earnings of 45 cents per share, which matched the Zach's estimate of 45 cents per share and increased 15% year over year. The company saw revenue figures of $5.3 billion, which lagged behind our, our consensus estimate of $5.4 billion, but grew 6% year over year. And the copy giant said that uh, comps increased 3% globally, 3% in the U.S., and 7% in China. Consolidated operating income increased 8% to $935 million, while consolidated operating margin expanded 40 basis points to 17.7%. And the company grew membership in its Starbucks rewards program, which is huge, I think, for Starbucks. They're really trying to really ramp that up. Up 11% year over year to 13.3 million members. Are you a... Rewards. I'm not. At, I'm not at Starbucks enough to do that, but I. I, I feel know. like I am, and I really should be, and I'm. I'm definitely <laughs> missing out. And Starbucks Rewards represented 36 percent of U.S. company operated sales in the second quarter. Interesting. Awesome. So some mixed results there, as I think we've seen yeah. throughout the whole retail, restaurant, retail Definitely. food industry. Um, and I think for Starbucks, as they're really trying to push this roastery concept. It's, oh yeah. Uh, as you know, they unveiled that huge Michigan Avenue concept here in Chicago, which I'm so excited yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be like the biggest coffee store in the city or like ever, basically. Ever, yeah. yeah. So I don't know how that's going to impact future sales, but yeah. hopefully it'll be a good thing for them going definitely, forward. Definitely down the line as the, the, those become less just in big markets like Chicago, although I'm sure that there will have to be some sort of a, a market size limit to that because of the whole structure. That's is it's like a city within a... Yeah. It's like a coffee city within it's a like city. It's like a coffee grocery store. Yeah, basically, yeah. But but that's... I like the idea so much because throughout the greater retail sector, whether it be retail stores or these retail kind of restaurants, food, drink areas, the one thing that has been keeping people going to 
brick and mortar locations is when they can go in and have an experience more oh, so than just 100%. buying something and leaving. So I like this roastery. We're going to keep, you're going to come hang out at a Starbucks for an hour or two hours. You're going to chill. You're going to pay $20 for two cups of coffee. Like, <laughs> it's going to be fun. So I'm definitely going to check out the roastery once it opens in Chicago. Oh, me too. I'll probably have to wait an hour for that, for that $10 cup yeah, of that'll coffee, be crazy. but I'll be there. All right. So I want to move on to tech earnings now. Um, lots of big, big tech companies on Thursday afternoon. Just start with Microsoft here. Microsoft released its third quarter fiscal 2017 results on Thursday after the bell. The company posted earnings of 73 cents per share, surpassing our Zach's consensus estimate of 69 cents per share. Non-GAAP revenue figures came in at $23.557 billion, which I expanded that out to the third decimal point because I wanted <laughs> to show that it basically matched our consensus estimate of $23.551 billion. Okay. Just to highlight some of the segments here, productivity and business processes grew 22% to $8 billion since the year-ago quarter. Of course, Microsoft has acquired right. LinkedIn. That contributed about $975 million in revenue. More personal computing revenue slipped 7% to $8.8 billion. So I just want to highlight that that more personal computing segment, there's a lot of hardware in there. That's where the Xbox unit oh. is. Oh, they're gaming. Uh -huh. Okay. And it has been for some time now the biggest segment. And just looking at these recent results as it continues to slip and productivity and business rev processes continue to grow, maybe a changing of the guard there soon. But I think the big story for Microsoft's report is the intelligence cloud unit revenue increased 11% to $6.8 billion. Server products and cloud service revenue increased 15%. And that was really driven by Azure revenue growth of 93%. Azure being nice. Microsoft's kind of web services cloud platform. Okay. So, I like that name. Yeah, Azure. I think that's a good one. I like it better than Amazon Web Services. <laughs> that's so boring. So let's move on now. Uh, also on Thursday, we had Intel. Intel. Yeah, so another big cloud player. The company reported earnings of $0.66 cents per share, which beat the Zach's estimate of $0.65 cents per share. And the company saw revenue figures of $14.8 billion, which matched our consensus estimate of $14.807 billion. Also brought it a, out to, a the, close one, yeah. to the third decimal point. Mm-hmm. You need those decimal points. Yeah, pretty much. Revenues were up 8% year over year on a gap basis and 7% year over year on a non-gap basis. Intel's Internet of Things group revenue was $721 million, up 11%, while its client computing group revenue came in at $8 billion, up 6%. So Intel's IoT, I didn't realize really yeah, how big, awesome. uh, yeah. big of a player they were in the Internet of Things space. Mm -hmm. So. One of the biggest surprises, I think, of their earnings results this yeah, quarter. Look for that to continue being a growth driver for everyone in this space. Definitely. So. And then as a result, Intel raised its full year 2017 revenue outlook by $500 million and now expects sales of approximately $60 billion for the year. And the company also raised its full year earnings per share expectations by $0.05 cents to $2.85 per share. Yeah, awesome. I love the Internet of Things. You know this about me. We've yeah. talked about the Internet of Things on the show. Another company with a bit of a, an Internet of Things play going on right now is Amazon, also up there in the cloud world. <laughs> Amazon was released its first quarter fiscal 2017 results also on Thursday afternoon. It was a busy Thursday afternoon. <laughs> um, the company boasted earnings of $1.48 per share, which absolutely crushed the Zach's consensus estimate of a dollar and three cents. Revenue figures of thirty five point seven one four billion also beat our consensus estimate of thirty five point three nine billion. Net sales were up twenty three percent year over year. However, operating income slipped six percent to one billion. AWS revenues were up to three point six six one billion. AWS acronym Amazon Web Services, this the uh, cloud platform that we were talking about earlier. This was an increase of 43% year over year on a constant currency basis. I will say that while this is certainly still impressive growth, 43% in any unit is impressive growth for that unit for yes. sure. 
I should say also though that it's almost like we can that 43% growth long way away from a plateau certainly but it's almost like now we can kind of see the plateau in the distant distant future I think that's that's a fair point because growth has slowed just a bit uh, last quarter growth was the growth in the AWS division was 55% it's 59% the quarter before that it seems to just be slowly taking off as that unit becomes more and more popular and they, and they're getting to the point where they're a, the clear leader in cloud-based mm-hmm. web services and they already have a ton of clients if that well, makes like sense. Netflix is one of their biggest yeah, clients. Yeah, I mean they just everyone basically. Yeah. <laughs> they they're, they and, and the great thing about that though is um, AWS is such a profitable ask, aspect of their business. They wouldn't actually be a profitable company right now without it. So it gives them this really consistent and reliable profit-making machine that they, they, they can then go out and burn a bunch of cash buying the rights to NFL's Thursday Night Football games or investing in artificial intelligence or whatever they want to do. Or putting out that new Alexa thing where you yeah. can take pictures and see if your jeans look really good on the, you that yeah, day. The internet of things is <laughs> really getting kind of weird and personal. <laughs> And also, do, if we're going to mention the Echo, the new Echo at least should mention that fact that Apple is like on the cusp of releasing their own Echo competitor. So another uh, in-home Internet of Things device speakery thing yeah. on its way soon. So guidance for Amazon. Amazon expects second quarter revenues to be between $35.25 billion and $37.75 billion. That would represent growth of 16% on the low end and 24% on the high end. Our current consensus estimate calls for revenue of $36.92 billion, so right in between the guidance range. So decent guidance, nothing too amazing there, but Amazon was up 2.5% after that amazing earnings beat. And sure, the growth is slowing down a little bit, but you have to absolutely credit AWS for a lot of that. Yeah, definitely. All right, so moving on to Alphabet. Alphabet. Uh, They also really put out an amazing earnings report, Mm -hmm. really, thanks to revenues and solid ad sales. Mm -hmm. Last big name that reported on Thursday after the bell that we want to touch on, and today they're up about 4%. And after they reported their earnings, they rallied. The stock was up about 5% in after-hours trading. So Alphabet, the reported diluted earnings of $7.73 per share, (coughs) which surpassed the Zach's estimate of $7.48 per share. The company saw revenue figures of $24.506 billion. Now, this is gets a little wonky here. Yeah. So, taking out commissions of $4.008 billion paid to Google Network members, Alphabet posted revenues of $20.12 billion, which beat our consensus estimate of $19.65 billion. Yeah, so we just look at a, a, a weird skewed revenue figure. Yeah, there, but. but either way, they knocked it out of the park. Mm-hmm. Operating income came in at $6.568 billion for the quarter, while operating margin was 27%, both showing increases from the first quarter of fiscal 2016. And in Q1, Alphabet reported an increase in aggregate paid clicks of 44%, and aggregate cost per clicks came in at a loss of 19% for the quarter. And this is because Alphabet was refining their methodology for paid clicks and cost per clicks. Awesome. So in case my mom is listening today and doesn't know what we're talking about, Alphabet is Google mom. So that's... that's <laughs> yes, uh, which, Google. And, and I, I wanted to say that partly as a joke because my mom listens to the show sometimes, but also uh, as a, a heads up that I think these performances, um, Google doesn't necessarily have the best track record of beating earnings if you look at their chart. So... I really think that this whole restructuring under the alphabet umbrella, bringing in new CFO, making them a more efficient company, not to say that they aren't still spending plenty of money on projects that aren't necessarily making any money right now. (laughs) Self-driving cars. Yeah. But those are things that can be done while still delivering value to your shareholders if your company is structured in an efficient way. So I think that this whole alphabet thing has really been an improvement 
I will say, yeah. an improvement. We call it that. So yeah, that was the busiest week of earnings potentially ever. Yeah. I mean, next week we have Apple and Facebook. Yeah. Which one are you Too excited big. to see next week? I think Facebook, as always. Yeah. Uh, I would say. Still expected to see insane double-digit growth. <laughs> yeah. User growth. Uh, yeah. Um, which is interesting because we've, we've talked on the show before about how um, there's been brief moments of hesitation with Facebook from investors because they were warning us that, yeah. hey, eventually we're not going to be able to post this insane growth that we've been posting. And I think the next couple of years especially are going to be kind of a, an investment year. That They've already told investors that there's going to be a more aggressive spending this year into future initiatives. They're hiring a bunch of employees. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how big of an effect that has on earnings in this quarter, Definitely. especially. But I'm, I guess I'm more like going or looking at Apple. I'm more anxious for Apple. Just, sure. I guess it is coming off there. Well, no, they had their holiday quarter. Yeah. So, but uh, so this will be the second and a half quarter of iPhone Seven sales, yeah. basically. If that makes sense. I guess sense. I'm always second and a half quarter, but yeah. Always anxious for Apple. More anxious. Yeah. Um, Only I, because uh, with Facebook, they've proven themselves quarter after quarter after quarter. Yeah. That's Apple true. is, ever since iPhone sales have started started to stagnate and yeah, slow down, you're like, oh. Um. Yeah, it's been an interesting uh, year and a half so, or so. Ever since that moment where we were like, okay, iPhone sales aren't going to keep growing every single quarter. Right. Or the growth rate isn't going to keep increasing especially and so yeah now that now it seems like there is more anxiety building up to an apple earnings release than really ever in company history and for good reason we feel confident in facebook not it's not to say that it couldn't have been a weak quarter or that the yeah you the never spending, know the spending that they've been doing this year may take a chunk out of the bottom line that's why they released the reports so <laughs> We will be paying attention to Facebook, Apple, and all the other earnings stories yeah. next week. I'm looking for more so than the earnings report next week. I'm looking forward to Apple figuring all this stuff out with the iPhone 8. That's is it going to be delayed? Is it not going to be delayed? Because I want a new iPhone, is the, okay? Is the <laughs> fingerprint sensor going to be right next to the camera? Or is it going to cost $1,000? What's going on? Is there going to be wireless charging? What am I, it's, What's going on? Tell me about the iPhone 8. <laughs> I'm tweaking. I haven't had an iPhone <laughs> release in too long. But all right, that was... Uh, thanks for sticking with us through all those. Uh, yeah, the, lots of numbers. The numbers can get monotonous, that is for sure. Um, if you think we missed something or if you would like us to cover a different earnings story... Just shoot us an email. Say hi. Shoot us an email at podcast at zax.com. You can also check out all of our other exclusive audio content at zax.com slash podcasts. Uh, remember to subscribe. Leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts. Thanks again for joining us. And we will see you next time on the Zax Friday Finish Line.